Rob Tubbett for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined by Eddie Hearn after a great night's boxing here at Wembley Arena. Start off the top, work our way down. Lawrence Acoli, the new WBO Cruiserweight champion. Talk to me about the performance, Eddie. Unbelievable performance. I mean, you know, to win a world title like that, I feel, I feel a bit for him that we weren't at the O2 in front of 14, 15,000 people. But what a performance, you know. It was so confident all week, wasn't he? Um, I and mean, you just wondered, did he really have... Can we just whack that light on again, just for two minutes? Is that right? Because otherwise, Rob Tebbett will cry. Um, and I think just one of the best performances I've seen to win a world title in terms of the composure, how clinical he was, and um, onwards and upwards, mate. I don't believe there's a cruiserweight in the world that beats him. I really don't. I know they're, they're all tough fights, but how do you beat a Coley? I mean, and he fancies it. He, you know, he's, he's so confident. He's punching so hard. We always knew he could punch, but what Shane has brought to him is the movement, the timing, you know, the, he's thinking. How many clinches tonight in six rounds? Four? Something like that. Outstanding performance. After the fight, very refreshing to hear him call out the number one in the yeah. division, widely regarded the number one in the division, Myris Bradis. Is that realistic? It is actually, yeah, because I know Bradis looking to go to heavyweight, but I'm sure he'd hang around for another fight, you know, a big fight. And, you know, Shane... I had a little debate with Shane, you know, he said, we, we, we need to get Bradis. And I said, fucking hell, Shane, Ian half good. You know, I don't mind saying it in the interviews. He went, no. He said, because listen, Makabu's good, Gulamarin's good, Bradis is there for the taking. I believe Lawrence has a style to beat him. Why not just go after the number one in the division? And kind of like, if you beat Bradis, you don't really need the other two, do you? Do you know what I mean? Because you've completed it and you just go to heavyweight. So we'll see, we'll sit down with, with 258, AJ and Shane and Lawrence and decide what's next. But I think only champions, really. Like, I don't think he needs a voluntary defence, do you? I mean, like, after that performance, why not go for it? So we'll see what's next. What does it mean to you to take Lawrence Cully, admittedly, obviously, with the help of 258 management, mm. but taking him from, you know, still a raw novice, still mm. sort of not necessarily after tonight, but still relatively inexperienced, but taking him from debut right the way through to world champion? Yeah, you know, that when we started out, and, and even up to, I guess, five years ago, you know, the, the line was always, well, they don't know how to take a fight to a world title. You know, it's like, well, we never had a chance because we only started, I only started 10 years ago. So, you know, in recent times, you've got Anthony Joshua, you've got Callum Smith, you've got Cal Yafai, you've got Katie Taylor, and now you've got Lawrence Acoli, you know, fighters that we've taken from the debut to world championship. And that feels really good. Luke Campbell, shout out to him because you know, he should have really won a world title by now. And um, that's a really good feeling because I remember Lawrence when he first came, he didn't have a clue what he was doing. He was just a kid with a dream and, and appetite and, and hunger and talent. But together, you know, and shout out to AJ and 258, they've got their first managed world champion tonight, which is fantastic for them as well. And everyone's worked really hard. It's been a great team effort. But it all comes down to Lawrence. You know, we can't really, yeah, we can take the, the credit for giving him the opportunities and, you know, giving him the fights. But he's done it. You know, he's the one who's gone out there and beaten everybody and, it, and he's beaten them easily. So he deserves all the credit. Let's get our way through the rest of the card. Um, staying with cruiserweights, trained by Shane McGuigan, ironically. Uh, Chris and Smith, we said before the fight that, you know, although people don't know Vasil Dukar, he's a very tough man, it was going to be a good fight. And that's what we got. It was, it really was. I mean, 12 rounds would have been interesting because Dukar looked out of the fight, didn't he? And just kept coming. I thought it was a good performance from Chris and Smith. I love watching him fight. It's always an exciting fight. And I'd like to see him against Tommy McCarthy next. Um, I know we haven't got too long, so we'll go through everybody, shall we? I thought Ellie Scottney boxed well. I think she'd be a little bit disappointed with her performance, but I thought Gangloff was absolute all action and a nightmare to fight. Important for her to bank the rounds. Ramler Ali boxed really nice as well, giving away a lot of weight to Beck Connolly. Um, very nearly stopped Beck Connolly and uh, you know, boxed smart in the last round to avoid the cut. Uh, Joe Caldina um, boxed well, you know, a bit sloppy at times. How a judge scored that. All square, I will never know. One round away from losing the uh -huh. fight. Absolutely mental. Mental that actually you, your career could be affected like that. For, I mean, listen, I gave Corbin a couple of rounds, like he deserved something, but he was never in the fight. I mean, um, but Joe needed those rounds. He needed those rounds. And then Anthony Fowler, who I thought was absolutely outstanding. You know, Fowler sometimes has looked a little bit one dimensional, you know, loads of power, granite chin, fit guy, but actually, Tonight, he showed great footwork against a good fighter in Forte, who was sharp in and out of range, buzzed Fowler in the second round, had fast hands. He took his time, he broke him up to the body, and he knocked him out wonderfully. And shout out to Brad Ray with a fantastic uh, KO win. Great card, great victory for Lawrence Acoli, and onto a massive 
week next week in Gibraltar and the moment of truth. Is this how we're going to do interviews from now on? You're just going to go through the whole thing and not have me doing any questions? I want to go home. <laughs> on to next week uh, in Gibraltar, Dillian White versus Alexander Povetkin. How much is on the line for Dillian White next week? Let's, let's, let's not mince our words. Fucking absolutely everything. I mean, he must win next week. He must win. Otherwise, his dream of fighting for a world title is over. You know, and uh, he knows that. The pressure's on. He's going to be sharp and spiteful. It's going to be brutal in every sense of the word. Um, I'm going to be absolutely bricking it. But it's what we love. It's top-level sport. It's one of the biggest fights in the division. And it's absolute must-win for Dillian White next week. I appreciate he won't be looking any further ahead than next weekend, but it's your job to do that. I spoke to Mauricio Silva the other day. He said there was no mandatory t- scheduled. What's the plan for him if he comes through uh, Alexander Povetkin? Well, he'll be the interim world champion. He'll be mandatory. It's just that when the mandatory is called. At the moment, Alexander Povetkin is mandatory. They just haven't called a mandatory. But the most important thing is winning and getting that mandatory position. So, you know, I think... Uh, the mandatory stuff, you know, that's all really nice, but all that matters here is the win. Because without the win, it's over. So let's do the business in Gibraltar next week. Devin Henry versus Jorge Linares. Mike Coppin just said it could be 21st of May in Las Vegas. Where do we stand on that? It's not done yet. Is that the date that you're looking for? Uh, or the 20th. The, no, it's not the date we're looking at. The, uh, the 21st, the 28th, or the 29th, but the, it is not signed yet. Las Vegas? Yes. Okay, final word on Shane McGuigan. You mentioned him there. Anthony Fowler vastly improved. Lawrence Coley massively improved. Good win for Chris Bill and Smith. How much credit does he deserve for those uh, for those improvements and those performances? Loads. Excellent trainer, you know. And and again, like the fighters dedicate their life to the the sport. He dedicates their life to the sport. You do, I do. And when someone does that, you have to respect them. Apart from you, who's a prick. I'm only joking, mate.